Thank you, Sabadi Pinong. Sabadi to those out there on Facebook as well. And thank you so much for joining us this Saturday night at our Revival Weekend. Uh, tonight we have something very special uh, installed for you. Um, and Pinong here, thank you so much for showing up. And um, I want to go ahead and start us off with praise and worship. So let me go ahead and ask our joint youth group, Loud Liberty and Amen, coming together to praise and worship one God. So go ahead. Would everyone like to stand for praise and worship? Um, I'm going to start us off with a word of prayer first. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Um, thank you that we get to be here together and just praise and worship you this weekend. Lord, thank you so much for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, I pray that we go into this weekend with um, an open heart and listening ears that um, the message that Dr. Henry has for us, that we just listen and we apply it to our lives and that this not be a weekend thing, but a life thing. Um, I want to pray for over our praise and worship band that we just um, are here to praise and worship you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. go before I know that you've even gone to win my war you come back with the head of my enemy you come back and you call it my victory go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. Your love becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness. And all I did was pray. Better your way. 
Psalm 100, 4 to 5 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. <clears throat> shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And keep you 
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Jesus, go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Oh
Dear Father God, Father God, thank you, Father, so much, Father. We, we ask, Father, for your presence to be here with us now. And Father God, I lift up this church, Father. I lift up your servants here in this room. I lift up and I praise you, Father. Thank you so much for what it is to be the king of all kings. I praise you, Father. Father God, we love you in all things. Father God, may we be filled with your spirit tonight. And may your will be done in our hearts. May you open our eyes and make us not physically, but spiritually sight to see you, Father, and your glory today. Father God, we love you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. What a blessing to see two future of two churches, the youth, coming together, serving one God. What a blessing it is. And welcome, again, uh, on behalf of Lowry Baptist Church, we, we thank you for those here in attendance, and we also thank you those that's out there streaming in on our Facebook. Um, some announcements. Um, after the service tonight, we will have a fellowship uh, dinner at the cafeteria. And then also tomorrow, we will um, conclude our weekend revival with the Sunday Easter uh, message. Again, my dear uh, brother and our guest speaker, Dr. Henry Chan, will lead us into that message. Service will start at 10 a.m. So please uh, relay that to um, our members, and we will stream that live as well. So uh, without further ado, let me um, ask um, our guest speaker, my dear friend, my brother in Christ, Dr. Henry Chan, to come up. Thank you, my friend. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Dr. Mon. Thank you for worship worship team. Sabadi Pinong Ti Hapang Nai Ong Praise to Get Chow. Kanoi Kop Kun Tolang Ti Ajan Mon Kam like a deacon Sakanoi. And in yard Hakanoi, sir, Pak Pasang Kit. เพราะว่าตอนแรงเป็นแรงชาวนุ่มมันบอกยูยูไนท์แต่ว่ามันคำบางคราวพี่น้องจะบอกเข้าใจภาษาอังกฤษแต่ว่าอย่าฟังคน
my heart's encouraged, and I hope yours as well, that this church, this community, desire to see a continuation of God's goodness, passing the gospel legacy, and we see that up here on the stage. Tonight, our young people are leading worship service. What an incredible display of passing a legacy to the next generation. So tonight, we're going to look at the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles. If you have your Bibles, we're going we're gonna to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 26. We're going to look at verses 1 through 23, basically the whole chapter. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 1 through 26, uh, 1 to 2 and 3. A youth pastor once said, the best way to find Second Chronicles is after First Chronicles. So, well, that's a brilliant idea, right? So tonight we're going to look at this, a uh, life of King Uzziah. And so I'm going to read this text to us, and it is one of the most inspiring texts at the same time, one of the saddest texts you ever find in the Bible. A guy who has everything. He started so well in life and it ended in such a tragedy. In it so bad. So I think God can teach us what it looks like here in this particular text. So I'm going to read that for us. And then we'll see what God has to say. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 1 through 23. And all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. He did right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. Now he went out and warned against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the va uh, wall of uh, Jetna and the, the, well, the wall of Ashdod, and he built cities in the area of Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who live in Gimbal and the uh, Mirinites. The Ammonites also gave tribute to Uzziah, and his fame extended to the border of Egypt, he became very strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and the valley gate at the corner of Buttress and fortified them. He built towers in the wilderness and hewed many cisterns. He had much livestock, both in lowland and in the plain. He also had plowmen and vine dressers in the hill country and the fertile fields, for he loved the soil. Verse 11, moreover, the Uzziah had an army ready for battle, which entered combat for, by divisions according to the number of the muster prepared by the jail, the scribe in Masariah, the official under the direction of Mahananiah, one of the king's officers. The total number of the heads of the households of valiant warriors was 2,600. Under their direction was a lead army of 500,000 who could wage war with great power to help the king against the enemy. Moreover, Uzziah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, armor, body armor, bows, and sling stones. In Jerusalem, he made engines for war, invented skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners of the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. Hence, his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. Okay, here is the transition part. Pay very close attention to this particular text. 
something is going to happen here, okay? The writer wants you to understand what is happening in verse 16. So pay very close attention. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God, for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Ezariah the priest entered after him, and with him eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. They opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, for, but for the priests and the sons of Aaron who have consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful. We have no honor from the Lord God. Here's another transition, verse 19. But Uzziah, with censor in his hand of burning incense, was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priest, the leprosy broke out from his head. Wow. Before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the altar of incense, Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead, and they hurried him out of there. And he himself also hastened to get out because the Lord had smitten him. King Uzziah was a leopard to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house, being a leopard, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, the first and last prophet Isaiah, the son of Emma, Emma's, has written, so Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the grave, which belonged to the kings, for they said, He is a leopard. And Jotham his son became king in his place. Father, speak to us tonight, only you can. Speak to us, O God, through your Holy Spirit, for your people are ready to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Chronicle focuses on Judah's sin, which led them to exile. Judah had several godly kings, especially Hezekiah and Josiah, but still they very declined into sin. But God remained faithful to his covenant. So this evening we'll look at one of Judah's ungodly kings, Uzziah, you see he reigned for 52 years. We can learn positive and negative things about this particular king. There are a couple of things that I want us to glean from this particular text. The first one is that spiritual accountability helps you develop your gifts and talents. Spiritual accountability helps you develop your gifts and talents. You see, King Uzziah is one of the most talented person that has ever walked as a king on the face of Israel. When he, his father died, 16 years old, 16 years old, he became king. Now, 16 years old, there's a lot of responsibilities, right? A lot of responsibilities. You're inexperienced, you're young, you don't know a lot of things. He was in his youth. How in the world he's going to govern the people of Israel? This guy is young. But you know that the wisest thing that the people of Israel did was bring a mentor, Zechariah. Okay. Zechariah was a mentor to this young king. It says in verse 5 that Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. This king is incredible. This guy was a general. Verse 11, he fought wars. He was a businessman, seafaring commerce. He controls the trade. He was a businessman. This guy is smart businessman. He controls the port. 
the ships that comes in and out, he collect taxes, is good for his nation. But this guy is also a general. He fought in battles. He was a man's man. Not only that, I love the, 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 the Bible says, moreover, verse 9. Okay, if you think this guy is great, think of this as again. Okay, here's another part of it. this guy is, is awesome. This guy's an engineer. Okay, he builds cisterns, he, he harnesses waters from, from the mountain to, to, to feed his people. And they say, moreover, this guy loves soil. This guy's a farmer, you know? He raised chickens, right? He had cows, vine dressers. This guy's brilliant. He, he graduated from Oklahoma State University. Like, you know, he, he won all the, the, the Future Founders of America's Award, right? He does it all. These guys know about how to get his hands and his feet dirty and how to feed his people. He knows how to protect his people through military might. He's very strong. And then this guy graduated from, from West Point. Look at this. This guy is incredible. He had divisions of, 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 of soldiers. And, and his green berets is 2,600 violent soldiers. I mean, this is special forces that he created. Okay, nobody's going to come against this king. He's very smart, okay? He knows military tactics. Okay, nobody's going to defeat him. Not only that, verse 14, is said, moreover, okay, if you, get, if you guys think this guy is great, now look at this. This is what he does. R&D, okay, research and development. This guy invented a skillful, lead a skillful man. He invented spears, helmets, body armors, special weapons to protect the people. This guy is brilliant. He has all the gifts and talents, everything. He expands his, his influence because why? Because God bless him. It has, he has Zechariah to lead him to expand his gifts and talents. This guy is smart. Businessman, general. He's a warrior, okay? He knows how to run his country. What went wrong, okay? We're gonna look at here in a bit. All his career, he's, he's, he's amazing. I have never read the Bible that one guy has so many, so many talents. This guy's incredible. He is one special man. He's a man's man. Okay? But he was successful because he had a mentor. He had a spiritual mentor named Zechariah that keeps him in place, that develops his talent. Okay, you, God's giving you this bis business mind. Use that. That's giving you this military genius to protect your people. Use that influence. God's given you this amazing engineering to, 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 to get all the waters to feed the people in Israel. He did that. Okay. He had a mentor. Somebody helped him to, 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 to grow in his gifts and talents. Do you have a mentor like that? We're talking about leaving a godly legacy. Did somebody pour into your life to, to where you are right now? When I came to the United States at the age of 14, I, I, I learned my, my ABCs and one, two, threes when I was in the fifth grade. And my pastor, Dr. Boone, Von Surit, who's a pastor at First M. Amarillo right now, but before he was in Oklahoma City. And he invited me to go to camp, to a boys camp, church camp. And um, while I was there for a whole week, there was this man from Eufaula, Oklahoma. He was a camp counselor for the whole week. Every night, 
refugee boys, we, we sit in this tent, and he began to share the gospel. You know, John 16, Johann Samsipo. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the very first time, very first time, I knew that I was a sinner. I repented of my sins and trust God, trust Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. That man that led me to the Lord was Norman Wagner. Norman Wagner was in Eufaula, Oklahoma. I live in Oklahoma City. Every year, Norman would send me a note, would send me a note saying, God has a, God has a plan for you. He loves you. I believe in you. This man only met me one time. Sometimes he would call me on the phone just to pray for me. This man was my mentor, godly mentor. He knows that my gifts and talents is from the Lord and that the Lord will use me however he sees fit. That's exactly what, what King Uzziah was experienced under the the, the mentorship of, of, of spiritual leader of Zechariah. Okay. Verse 16, something totally happened. Something totally different happened to this guy. What in the world happened to King Uzziah? What is happening here? Some, he, he basically turned, I mean, forsake God. This is what it says. He became strong, okay, that his heart was so proud. He, he, he doesn't need God anymore. He was un, unfaithful to God. What, a, what happened? Some commentaries say that his mentor died. Some commentaries say his mentor passed away, and he doesn't have that wisdom from Zechariah. But nevertheless, this the second truth that we want to glean from this one, the first one we talk about is that spiritual accountability help us develop our gifts and talents. The second one that we can find this text is that spiritual rebellion leads to tragedy. This is very sad for a promising life of King Uzziah. What happened? What happened here? He got so proud. He got so proud that he turned away from God. It is almost like the writer of this Bible said, don't blink. This is very important. I want to tell you what happened. You know, it's like somebody hit, hit you with a two by four, right? This is exactly what the writer wants us, wants you to understand what is happening with this king. Why is his heart is so different now? Because he believed that all those things puff himself up. All the military things puffs himself up. He became prideful. In the verse here, it says, pride, he acted corruptly, he was unfaithful. This is one of the saddest story of the Bible. You know, pride 
Proverbs says that pride goes before destruction and halts spirit before a fall. You know, this, this man, this king outside, he was a man's man. He accomplishes a lot, a lot of accolades, a lot of praise, a lot of accomplishments. But inside, this man was a spiritual baby. He was very, very weak. He cannot lead the nation if you are very spiritually weak. He was prideful. What did he do? What did King Uzziah do? We're going to look at here in a bit what he, he did. Talk about pride. Andy, Andy Stanley said, Your talent and your giftedness as a leader have the potential to take you further than your care can sustain you. That ought to scare you. This guy has everything, but he does not have the spiritual fortitude. He does not have the spiritual eyes or the godly character to sustain him. That his success is his downfall. His pride is his downfall. You see, pride pretends, leads you to pretend that somebody you're not. That's exactly what happened here. You know what he did? He is a political leader. He is a political leader. He went into a religious institution. He went to the temple where he does not belong. He profaned the things of God. The priests as Rai said, you don't belong here. This is not your place. Okay? You are a political person. His heart got proud, and he said, do you know who I am? I am your king. I can do whatever I want to. Proud, pride, the Hebrew word means deep-seated disease which might be described as a heart trouble. This guy has a heart trouble. He has a disease. He has a disease. Uzziah was not content, content with the, the position that God gives him as a political leader. He wants the office of the church. This is very scary. He pretended to be somebody who's not. He profaned the things of God. And so sometimes God has a way of humbles us. And he's going to humble uh, uh, King Uzziah. You know, there's a story about Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was on the airplane, first class, okay? You guys know Muhammad Ali, you know, he's a professional boxer, very famous. And so when the plane was great, getting ready to take off, the stewardess came over and saw his uh, seatbelt was, was not fastened. He, and she said, uh, uh, mister, can you fasten your seatbelt? And he got proud and, 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 and uh, arrogant. He said, do you know who I am? I am Muhammad Ali. I'm Superman. And the stewardess said, Superman doesn't need airplanes. So sit down and buckle up, buttercup. Sometimes God has a way of humble us. Azariah, this is an incredible, incredible, I don't want you guys to miss this. Azariah and 80 men, okay, 80 men, it says on verse 17, valid men. These are spiritual leaders in the temple with the priest Azariah. 
Okay, you can say that these are the deacons of the church. These are the spiritual men of the church. And this king is coming through that door and said, I'm going to take over your role. Famous people will come in the church and said, I want to be part of what you're doing. But they have different, different motives. Eighty men. Eighty men stood against King Uzziah. Said, no, you don't belong here. We're going to tell you the truth, King Uzziah. You need, to, you need to get out of the door. You see, this is an incredible display of the gospel. You see, when somebody loves us enough, they tell us what, what is wrong. They discipline us. They tell us, they give us warnings. They give us yellow lights, a caution lights. Tell us, don't go there. Something bad is going to happen to you. And that is a beautiful part of the, these, these 80 men. I wish I could be under their leadership. These guys speak the truth. No matter who you are, no matter how famous you are, how much money you have, you have no place in here. You don't belong here because your motive is wrong. It is not right. They love King Uzziah enough to speak the truth to to him. They give him a second chance. They say, don't do this. Get, get out of here. You don't belong here. You, you dishonor God. We know the whole story. He didn't listen. He said, something bad's going to happen to you if you don't listen. That's exactly what happened here. Okay. He became a leopard. He became a leopard. Leprosy broke down on him. And I think that's the most saddest things in the Bible. You see, I don't know what do you want your tombstones to say. You know, a lot of people don't think about that. There's a lot of famous people think in their tombstone. When they die, they want something, something to say in their tombstone that will, will, will remember them, right? So Billy, Billy Graham said, Preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, John 14, 6. And Frank Sinatra said, the best is yet to come. Right? And then Martin Luther King, you all know this. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. And then Billy Graham's wife, she said, end of construction, thanks for your patience. What do you want your tombstone to say? This is the saddest thing that they remember about King Uzziah. They didn't remember he was a military general. They didn't remember that he was a great engineer. They didn't remember he was a great businessman. Verse 23, this is his tombstone. He is a leopard. That is his tombstone. He is a leper. They didn't remember all the good things he did. They remember one bad thing that he did because he disobeyed God. He was a leper. I think the saddest thing about this particular phrase is that he was, verse 21, it says, he was cut off from the house of the Lord. There is no one to visit this guy. He was in the house by himself. No friends. He was quarantined by himself because he was a leper. He had this disease. No friends. Somebody can't visit him. What a sad indictment of this great king. You know, in the midst of that, you have this amazing eight men, band of brothers, to speak the truth to this king. 
last three years, I think I preach one, a couple of sessions, I share with this, how God brought 1.5 second generations, you know, like Jai and Lennon and Dr. Chance, guys from Dallas area, Denver, California, John in Arkansas, we, we Zoom together. Every Thursday night, we have a Zoom Bible study. Why? Because we want to be like these 80 men who speaks the truth, who keeps each other accountable, who's not afraid to tell the truth, who's not afraid to tell one another. And these guys can tell me, like Henry, if I say something wrong, they will tell me. Why? Because they love me. They care for me. If they face, put something on, on Facebook that is, is not godly, I will tell them the same thing. This is top of 80 guys that, that we see in this particular text. You know, rebellions, rebellions against spiritual things will always lead you to the wrong path. This is exactly what happened to King Uzziah. Disregard for what God has to say. And the end of that is that he was a leper, not a great king, not a military genius guy, but a leper. I love to give, give us this, this, this thing about pride, is that pride is the only disease known to men that makes everyone sick except the person who has it. Pride is the only disease known to man that makes everyone sick except the person who has it. This man was sick. But we are created in God's image. Our lives are to, to glorify God. He gives us gifts and talents to glorify him. Western Catechism asks, what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So we learn from this particular text, youth, God has given you an amazing talent. Find you a mentor. Let somebody pour into your life. You yourself pour into somebody who's younger than you are. You see, Uzziah started great, but he ended his life terrible because he, he, he departed from that, from that reality. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you what happened during the time of King Uzziah. You know, in the midst of disappointment about this great king, Prophet Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah, he says in chapter 6, he said, in the year King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train was filled the temple. Seraphim was above him with six wings. Two covers his eyes, two covers his feet, and two flew. And one call out to another, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the foundation of the thresholds tremble at the voice of him who call out. While the temple was filling with smoke. And then Isaiah said, woe is me. Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live with people with unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord of hosts. You see, in the midst of disappointment, Isaiah saw God. You said, I didn't have a good bringing. I didn't have a good family. In the midst of that, you can still see God. In the midst of disappointment in your life, 
if you really seek it, in the midst of that, you will find God. So here we look at King Uzziah, started his life, incredible talent, incredible talent, but he ended up in a disaster. So our lessons today is that we need to invest in a spiritual relationship and accountability in a community. So invest in somebody and let somebody invest in you. Amen? Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what your word has to say to us this evening. And so, God, uh, tonight we want to, Lord, to be, to be open to you and, and, and to learn from King Uzziah about the importance of having a mentor, having a spiritual accountability. So at this time, I'm going to ask our deacons, pastor, come up front. We're going to stand up in the front here. And uh, if you need somebody to pray for you, uh, tonight we want to spend some time just, just praying for one another, pray for the church. So deacons, pastor, come up front here. All the leaders come up front. Okay. We're going to spend some time praying. Sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege you carry. And everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So at this time, I want I want the youth to come down here because we tonight it is a youth Every night, and you guys come. We want our elders to pray for you. Okay, you guys come on forward. Parents, grandpa, grandma, you guys come and pray for these youths. These are your Joshua. These are your next generation. So find them, put your hands on them, and pray for them. Okay? You see there tonight, we, we see our, uh, our youths are, are serving, and we, we see them. And, and don't forget in the future to pray for them. So let's spend some time praying for, for our youths at this time. Okay, men, you may want to put, put your hands, deacons, fathers, find those youths and pray for them. I give everything to Shelter, shepherd, savior, king, I give everything to you. So we can have you laden, covered with a load of care. Precious savior, still I
Father, thank you for these moments, Lord, that we are praying, interceding, praying for our youths, God. Thank you that you created them for your own glory and for your own purpose. Remind them of the gifts and talents that you giving them. Help them to gravitate toward you and, and seek mentor and, and let those pour into them so they will walk with you the rest of their lives to love you with their heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we thank you for these Joshua's, these young ladies and young men who will carry the torch to, for the next generation, God. Empower them, Lord, to live a life that's blameless. Empower them to see the end that you want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So bless these young men and young women and our youths in this church, in this community, God. Help them to be a brilliant light and example for you, God. Lord, thank you for our time together this evening. We pray that you will uh, rest our hearts as we get ready to celebrate the Resurrection Sunday tomorrow, Lord. And I pray also as we go in fellowship, uh, breaking bread together, Lord, we know that everything comes from your hand. God, we love you. Thank you for our time tonight. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.